Hello guys, got a little video series starting on the channel now. What we're going to be doing is making a stock for the Air Max Quatran. So I'm going to split this video up into a number of parts and they're going to be coming to the channel as and when we get time to finish the stock. So this little series is going to be a few parts and we'll just be working on the stock as and when we get the time. So in the first one, what we're going to be doing is making a stock tang. And this will be a secondary fixing point along with the pistol grip. Now as standard in the Quatran, the folding stock adapter fits in the back. Our one's going to be a laminate fixed stock, so we're going to have to replace this and make a new one. It's not a very complicated item, but it does have to be right, so we're starting off with that. And the first thing to do when working in the mill is to square off the stock. So in the background you can see me milling one face at a time, and the brass rod in the back there is just a little trick we use in the mill to stop the stock rising when we tighten the moving jaw. The main critical dimension of the stock tang is the height. It has to be a nice snug fit in the back of the block as the rear of the pick rail is floating so it needs to support the back of the pick rail. We're taking measurements in the mill with the micrometers and the first reading we've got there is 16.03 and we're aiming for 12 mil. Gonna try and get it as close to 12 mil as possible so we need 4 mil to come off that. This mill has got a DRO fitted so we can just move down 1 mil at a time taking nice shallow cuts until we get the depth we want. And this time we hit the dimension we was looking for straight away, 12 mil. Once we've got it to height, we can take it to width. Now the width's nowhere near as important, but we still want it nice and close. So we're aiming for 23 mil in width. Once we'd got the stock all squared up, we had to cut it to length. Now this is just a nominal size. We're using three inch wide stock. So we just took it down to 76 mil, but we did that off camera as it was a pretty quick job. After that, it was time to drill the holes. So when drilling holes, I always mark the stock out with either a black pen or some dicom, and then scribe some witness marks where the holes need to be. When you're using the DRO and offsets, it's really easy to miss the holes. So just putting a little witness mark stops you from drilling the hole in the wrong position. So we sent a drill all the holes out first, then come back with the respective drill bits. So the two at the front, we need them to be 2.5 mil, and we want a nice, good snug fit on the pin. These are the pivot point for the cocking handle and the Air Max original part is steel. We're making R1 out of aluminium so we want a nice good press fit for the pins and that way it will take a lot longer for the pin to wear loose if it does at all. To get a nice tight fit we're using a 2.3mm drill bit first to go through as a pilot and then using a nice sharp 2.5mm straight after and as you can see there a test fit on the pin it's a nice snug fit. We did the same on the other side as well then move to the rear where there's two M4 screws that we've got to tap out. And these are what fit the stock attachment to the actual block itself. And we're going to be using an M4 form tap. So a 3.7mm drill bit straight through. A nice large countersink. Then through with the form tap. The form tap cold forms the aluminium so it should harden it as it taps it. And what that will do is just create a stronger fixing. Less likely to strip out. Once that's done we need to create a little radius on the front so it fits in the block nicely. And to do that we're using a radius cutter. Quite handy these little cutters are and they just form a radius on the ends there. Next up is the slots for the cocking handle on one side and the cover plate on the other. So we're using a 6mm end mill and plunging the bulk of the material out first then coming back through getting the depth we want and also the width. We have got a stop set up in the vise so once we do one side we can just flip the part over to the other side and do exactly the same on that side. In between these operations we are edge finding using a wiggler but I've already showed you how I use them on other videos so I'm skipping it in this one just to move it along a little quicker. Once both sides are slotted out we can drill and tap the centre for the little cover plate screw. Once all that was done it was time to test fit it in the block just to make sure the cocking handle worked, the cover plate fitted and all of that. Now I was originally going to leave the tang full width like it is now, but upon looking at it, it meant that I'd have to make the stock awful wide at the top. So what I decided to do was take the sides off the tang, and what that would allow me to do is bring the laminate height to the top of the back of the block, just below the Picatinny rail. So then it was just a case of milling off the sides. So we set it back up in the mill and just ripped the sides down. After that was done, the final operation was just to put a little 45 on the two leading edges of the back block. Unfortunately, I did forget to press the record button on the camera, so we didn't get no footage of that. But it was a very simple operation, and you can see it just matches up with the back of the block nicely. Once all the metal work was done, it was time to work on the laminate. So the laminate we're going to be using is sort of a light blue and silver. I've already done a red wolf stock in this, and it really does look quite nice. So we're going to be using the same on the Catran part we're using is an off cut from that stock so the first thing we've got to do is mill the bottom flat. 
This will just make it easier for further operations in the mill, as we'll always be able to just chuck it in the mill, put it on the flat, and it'll be where it needs to be. To do that, we're using the big face mill that I've got. Really does make a nice job of wood, cuts it nice and cleanly. Once we've got a little flat on the bottom there, we can flip the block over in the vise, setting it on the flat, and then milling the top. This will ensure that the two flats we've milled are nice and parallel to each other, and we're starting off from a nice flat point. Once the top's flat, we use a 12mm end mill and go along the front edge to create a nice 90 degree perpendicular face. That just gives us a nice zero to work from. And also the Catran has a pistol grip, so the pistol grip front is at 90 degrees to the top. After that, we start milling out material. So there's going to be two steps in this laminate blank. So we're taking out the bulk of the material first for the top step. We're not worried about any bust out or anything like that. This laminate is 62mm wide, so it's well over width. So the little bit of bust out's not a problem. And we're just milling the material out like we would in metal. The mill's not an ideal tool for doing this because the mill spindle itself runs so slowly. This mill here has a top speed of about 1600 RPM. For wood though, you really want between 12 and 24,000 RPM. So it's a little slow, but still very, very usable. And the second step in the material was done by plunging. So going straight down with the end mill, and that stops most of the bust out. Again, this is way over width, so it's not a problem. But I thought I'd show you how to do it if you didn't want any bust out. So we plunge mill out the bulk of the material, and come back through backwards and forwards just to bring it nice and flat. And this step is the base of the pistol grip. Last thing to do in this setup is to radius the front edge to match the rifle. So this will be the radius in the pistol grip and the radius in the rifle is 7mm, so we're just coming back with a 7mm radius and end mill, the same as we did in the metal, just taking off that front edge. Next up, we're milling out the slot for the pistol grip. Now, there's a very, very good video on YouTube from a stock maker called Tilly's Gunstocks. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description, but he does a very, very good video on the pistol grips, how to do them with routers and such, but he gives all the important information on the dimensions of the slot. And he also shows a very good jig he's made up for making the pistol grips. We didn't make a jig up for this one. I managed to use a couple of angle blocks, set the angle to 30 degrees, which is the required angle, and mill the slot normally. So the slot width in our case was 9mm. We got it down to depth, and then we drilled as deep as we could through the stock for the stock screw. Now we didn't get all the way through the stock, as it's quite long, but when we take the material off the other side of the stock, we should see the screw hole. Then from that side we can counter bore it and that will allow us to fit a stock screw to it. Right then, that's all the work it took to get the blank to about this far. We've still got a lot of work to do, all the shaping to do, fitting of the adjustable cheek piece, adjustable butt pad, we're going to try and do both in this one. So it's a really nice stock. A lot of material still to remove, this is just an off cut of laminate that we had, so we've only really worked on this side here. We got the grip drawn out, that's the original Air Max one, but we're going to be changing that slightly, slightly different angle, a little thicker, and just more suited to my sort of hands. It's probably going to be a cutout in the middle here, so it will be a thumb hole stock. And of course, we've still got a little bit of inletting to do. So, I don't know how well the camera's going to pick that up. We've got our radius here, which matches the rifle. We've done that off camera, as it's a lot of Dremel work, a lot of um, offering the stock up to the rifle, getting it exactly where we need to get it. And it's just a bit hard to video. So we've got to take out a piece in the top here. So that our metal tang that we built earlier will slot in there and then we'll drill and tap this and put screws in it or whatever we're gonna do. And that'll give a nice fixing point. So we'll have the hole for the pistol grip, a hole in the pistol grips around here. We'll have the hole in the tang and that should give us a really nice solid fixing for the stock. So I'll get it put in there for you, just to, so you can have a look at it. Nice snug fit, but there it is there. So you see the grip lines up quite nicely, all the radiuses match, and up until now it's fit really quite nicely. This is probably going to be one of them projects that a video comes out every now and again rather than a weekly update as we'll just have to work on the stock as and when we get the time. Right then, and there we have it. So this one was mainly on making the tang and starting the inletting in the stock. Next one will be finishing the inletting in the stock, roughing it down to its rough shape, removing a lot of the material, and we might have a go at fitting the adjustable cheek piece and butt pad. 
and then the final video will be the shaping and the finishing off of the stock. I'll try and get as much footage as I can but with the woodwork we have to do it outside as to not sort of get all dust in the workshop so it's a little hard to video but I'll do my best to get you some nice footage. But for now guys thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.